Hi, I'm Dr. Lucy Matthews, ear, nose and throat surgeon at the Melbourne ENT Group. In this video, I'm going to talk about the post-operative journey and care instructions after middle ear ventilation tube insertion, commonly known as grommets. If you're watching this video, you or your child are thinking about undergoing grommet insertion. This is one of the most common ENT operations worldwide. It's commonly performed in both ears, but can also be a single-sided procedure. Reasons for the surgery vary, but it may be performed to prevent persistent middle ear fluid and associated hearing loss, such as glue ear, help prevent recurrent middle ear infections, help resolve an acute middle ear infection, relieve negative pressure associated with obstructive eustachian tube dysfunction, or prevent pressure-related damage to the ear in patients undergoing hyperbaric therapy. After the surgery, you or your child will generally go home the same day. Most patients don't experience significant pain. Mild discomfort can be controlled with simple pain medications, such as common over-the-counter painkillers like paracetamol or ibuprofen. We don't routinely prescribe antibiotics after this type of ear surgery. Your ENT specialist will instruct you on the use of antibiotic eardrops after surgery if required. Whilst there are many benefits to grommets by sitting in the eardrum, they technically make the middle ear no longer waterproof. Therefore, your ENT surgeon may talk to you about water precautions after grommet surgery. These are methods of preventing non-sterile water from showers, baths, pools or rivers from entering the middle ear through the grommets and potentially causing middle ear infections. In recent years, in light of limited evidence that following strict water precautions actually leads to fewer infections, a number of medical guidelines around the world have actually recommended against water precautions. Either way, we recommend that you discuss the risks and benefits in your particular case with your ENT surgeon in order to make an informed choice. If you and your surgeon decide that water precautions are to be followed strictly, then you must keep the ears dry until the grommets extrude. You must start the use of waterproof ear plugs that may be silicon or blue tack at the time of your routine shower or bath. Ensure that the ear plugs are for water exclusion rather than noise protection. After each use, please clean the plugs with water and soap and allow for them to dry before the next use. Blue tack should be discarded after single use. In the case of children, it's useful to start the use of plugs as a game a few days before surgery takes place so that they become used to the sensation of having the ear plugs during the bath or shower. It's often helpful to reinforce ear plugs for swimming with a swimming cap or headband. You or your child will require one or two days off work or school to allow for full recovery. You should avoid swimming pool activities or lessons until the post-operative appointment with your specialist. You may restart these activities using adequate swimming earplugs and a headband or cap afterwards. We suggest you or your child does not dive underwater, even with plugged ear canals. You should contact your ENT surgeon or local GP if you or your child experience ear infection such as discharge, fever or severe pain that does not respond to prescribed painkillers. At your first post-operative appointment, your ENT specialist will look into the ear canals to ensure the grommets are well positioned, that they are dry and patent, and a hearing test will usually have been arranged prior to this review. You should ensure that you bring a copy of these results along with you on the day of your appointment. You may be discharged for ongoing follow-up with your GP after this appointment. Some minor bloodstained fluid may discharge from the ears in the first few days after surgery. This is usually due to the cut itself in the eardrum or from minor ear canal scratches during the surgery. Bleeding occurs occasionally down the track when the grommets have been in position for some time. Although alarming, it's almost never serious. It's usually associated with an infection around the grommet and the formation of a small polyp or reactive granulation tissue at the site of the grommet. It often needs treatment with antibiotic eardrops to resolve. Sometimes the infected grommet needs to be removed and or replaced with a sterile new one if the infection fails to settle. Discharge from the ears occurs probably in 15 to 20 percent of patients with grommets due to getting water in the ears or from an upper respiratory tract infection. This is not disastrous but should be treated. Often patients are treated for some time with oral antibiotics unsuccessfully because the main organism is resistant to these. Most ear discharges respond to antibiotic ear drops of which ciprofloxacin containing drops such as siloxin or ciproxin HC are the safest and most effective. In Australia, these need a doctor's prescription. 
Grommets should extrude within six to nine months after insertion. This means the eardrum heals naturally and they fall into the external ear canal. Extrusion is painless. Please follow any water precautions advised by your specialist until then. We recommend you visit your local GP for ear examination and review every four months or earlier if you experience an ear infection or hearing loss. Remember to always discuss any questions, concerns regarding your care with your GP or treating doctor. Thanks for watching. For more videos on ENT conditions, treatments, instructions and procedures, check out the rest of the videos on this channel or head over to our website for more details and for downloadable information sheets.